All right, so here's pretty much all the uh, Prometheus figures. Well, I think this is all the Prometheus figures, or at least so far. This is like mid-April. Um, I know they got uh, Fifeld and um, Holloway, and their infected forms coming out, at least according to the back of the um, newer packaging. I think David's packaging has this as well. Yeah, it's got Holloway and Fifeld on there. This is coming soon. This is Holloway. It was already out, but I haven't seen him. So I don't know if they meant to put coming soon underneath him, too. Um, but yeah, I, these are all the ones that I've seen. Um, I, they just got the um, Deacon and David in, like, uh, whenever it was that I, I did my uh, David video. It was like two or three days or so before that is when they got them in over my my Toys R Us. So, yeah. Um, so if I already looked at this guy, he's pretty cool. Um, not, not much more to say about him. And then, of course, we've got David here out of his packaging. Has his little pad and all that, swappable heads. Nice David Foss, Michael Fossbender? David, D Michael Fossbender. Um, likeness there going on. I like how they dab a little bit of gloss on the eyes. It's kind of cool. And then his extra parts. All right. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at the Deacon here real quick. So everybody has the same standard packaging. They all have the Prometheus logo. Um, the single figures have it up here at the top, right there, and then uh, has like the name down here on the bottom. This has a couple of the, um, what do they call these things, like the little snakes, the little, um, I'm not sure what you'll call them, they're kind of like proto face huggers, I guess. Uh, that's cool, and then the, um, the um, artifact uh, head from the uh, decapitated engineer there with uh, the mask too. And that's really cool. That's what really sold me is the accessories. I love the accessories Neck is putting in with these things. It actually made me go back and get some more Predator stuff that I probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise, but um, that's for another day. So anyway, um, yeah, you got the Deacon here. Kind of like a uh, early form or alternate form of the standard Alien. Has a lot of the same features. Almost has a uh, Tim Burton uh, sandworm kind of look to it. So that's kind of neat. Um, back of the packaging there, already showed. Cool. Uh, let's see. Take a look at the regular engineer. So here he is uh, in his suit, like right out of the um, sleeping chamber there. Uh, I guess the only engineer they could do left is a uh, a opening sequence uh, engineer. And hopefully they do one like that. Not because I want a naked engineer, but I'd like to see um, NECA do some uh, soft goods. You know, like use the same material they use for the uh, the Star Wars Jedi cloaks, especially like the um, there's an Obi Wan that came with I want to say a little table or some other accessories, but it had nice thick brown, real good clothy um, coat. And of course, the material is a little bit thicker for three and three quarter scale, but I think for these guys it would be spot on perfect. Um, and he doesn't have anything with him, unfortunately, but he's a pretty large figure. Um, and I wish I had some of the newer. Uh, well, I don't have any of the T2 figures. Um, except for an endoskeleton somewhere. But I wish I had like a, a regular human scale figure. Wait a minute, I do. I'm an idiot. Right here, David. To show you just how big this guy is. I mean, he's a monster. So, you know, you get the extra size on there, so you're not going to get a bunch of accessories. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Um, and we'll have these guys loose and lined up here once I get them out of the packaging. So that's nice. Has the, um, has the, has the, uh, sorrowful, almost, uh, uh, I'm not sure what you would even call that expression, really, but, you know, from the pictures and stuff, you figure this would be like a compassionate kind of being, but, man, this guy was really angry to see some living humans. So, hopefully, um, right now, I guess the script is in flux. Uh, the guy from Lost isn't coming back to, to finish it. Surprise! You know, cliffhanger. Um, but uh, hopefully they come back with a, uh, with a good script for the sequel. Um, and then they got the two-pack here that has the uh, Trilobite, which... I don't know how it really got that name, because, you know, I've seen the actual little trilobites, you know, fossils and stuff, and I don't know, just one of those things. I mean, the deacon, I kind of understand, because he's kind of like a deacon blue color. I get that, but trilobite, not really sure. Um, and then, of course, you have the battle uh, damage engineer on there. It's got some nice, nice screaming face sculpt going on there, a little bit of acid burns and stuff. You got the proboscis portion that sticks out from the trilobite guy. He's got a lot of bendy tentacles and stuff. It's got the same background as everybody else. Um, the name's down at the bottom and stuff at the top of the uh, packaging. And then of course you got this nice um, image on the back which is really cool. Um, so 
There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. The only thing I, I wish they had... <laughs> Wayland yutani at the bottom. The only thing I wish they'd done with the packaging is when you have it sitting there like that in the packaging, if you're a mint on card collector, which sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. I'm not. It just kind of depends on what it is. Um, kind of wish they'd have the package where it was uh, propped up a little bit higher, you know, so it actually would sit level. Um, I hate to buy one of the uh, Masters of the Universe Classics clamshell cases to put this figure in like that, but... Uh, they got they got uh, some Zola World. I think they actually pop up a little bit higher. I'm not really sure. What's on this sticker? How oh, fuzz? Yeah. So all right, there we go. That's everybody in the boxes. And so I'll go through and start ripping them out. I'll probably go with this engineer first, and then go with the uh, the uh, Deacon, and then the, the two pack finally. So cool. We got a uh, Mega. Um, Prometheus video coming up, so hang in there. All right, so here we are with the engineers. Um, we've seen the um, space jockey suit um, engineer already. Which he has a real, um, I mean, the aesthetic, of course, is true to the first Alien movie. And the armor looks a lot like the Alien itself from the later Aliens movies. But um, it's kind of weird that they did the, I mean, this is based on a Giger design. But uh, like the hips right there, I just really noticed that the plate, the way this, this sticks up and everything, it's all like the Alien physiology. But then in the actual engineers, set this guy aside, the actual engineers themselves, don't appear to have any kind of um, natural shaped um, like armor like plating on there which when the alien later on comes out it has it so I mean not not the Deacon alien from from this from Prometheus but later on so it's kind of weird that this which is shown to be a mechanical um, a suit um, actually gets emulated later by the actual organic alien so I um, thought that was kind of weird Anyway, here's the regular engineer. Um, this is how he was when he popped out of the uh, suspended animation, out of his uh, little sleeping chamber there. It's a really cool sculpt. I haven't put pictures side by side, but, you know, looks good to me. Not a lot of nice detailing in the eyes there. Um, his head's on a ball, of course. It doesn't really pop off as easy as the um, space jockey suit engineer did. Because it just popped right off, but it has have like a pseudo ball-like shoulder, and they're, they're, the motion is kind of restricted. No um, bicep swivel, just a single point um, elbow with a swivel hinge, I guess. Does have a ball jointed hand, both hands actually, and he does have a ball jointed waist. Now the upper portion of the torso is a hard plastic, and then this lower portion that grabs around the leg and stuff, all this up into the, into the upper torso is all a rubber kind of material so that's kind of neat so that keeps the joint all hidden and everything um, then the legs are kind of almost on a marble ball kind of joint where you got that hinge inside there Let's see if I can get some light inside there so yeah you get like the hinge ball kind of thing so it's, it's supposed to come forward but it kind of doesn't it just kind of swivels in the socket it goes in and out and then this is on an angle cut so, and it's kind of stiff, so it's kind of hard to get the swivel on that. But, um, you can still get a lot of movement out of this guy. Um, has like a, um, hinge, um, swivel kind of knee. Which is good. And then the same thing with the foot. It's, um, actually it's a ball joint. Um, I was expecting a sw uh, hinge swivel, but it's actually a ball joint. Um, just take a look at the sculpt there. And everything. Got nice little feetsies going on and all that. Cool. And then the foot pegs are, they'll, they'll fit the uh, DC stands. As a matter of fact, I'll stick them on one now. 
only thing is the hole is way back at the um, ankle, so it kind of sits kind of forward. So if you want to use stands, you can use these. They work. Um, and there's the regular engineer. Now the uh, two-pack engineer, the exclusive, the Toys R Us exclusive engineer. <laughs> this guy actually stands better off the stand. Um, it's the same exact sculpt, except for technically, I guess, one, two, three, four pieces. Well, six pieces if you include the hands. Um, <clears throat> okay, you've got that hand there is a different sculpt. That hand there is a different sculpt. So that's neat. Um, and the uh, the black part on the torso is actually acid damaged on the on the uh, battle damage engineer there. And his face, of course, is a brand new screaming sculpt there with damage on one side. Um, the acid damage on the torso extends back some. On here, it is actually a different sculpt. You can see, like, it's a little bit different uh, texture. He's, he's out cold. Um, so, slightly different texture on part of the, the back. So, they probably could have stopped it right there. But they did a real good job with the sculpt and just uh, didn't even try to save the back piece um, from not having to be re-sculpted some. And then, of course, the shoulder is a re-sculpt. This whole portion right here. But then the rest of the guy, he's all the same. Same articulation and everything. Um, just a different paint job, which the paint job is cool, but it's a little inconsistent, especially with stuff like on the back of this guy's legs. I don't know. I would like to have seen them run this guy through the same process as they did. Oh, he's not want to stand up now. This guy was standing up really good earlier. I guess I have to use a stand. Yeah, alright. So, alright, this guy. And this guy. Alright, if you look at their, I guess their butts and their thighs there, you can see that the all-white um, original engineer has a lot more color going on than the battle damage engineer. And those should be the same. So, it's like a little oversight. I don't know if there's like a price, or not a price, a cost-cutting measure there when they went through and just did like a huge wash on this guy and didn't worry about that paint app. Or those paint apps on there, which is fine. I can respect that. I don't know who else noticed it, but I tend to notice stuff like that. And so here we are, back together with all of them there. And of course the suit. I don't know. He he's slightly taller. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, but not much. It doesn't seem like it's quite enough to compensate for the um for the helmet there, but it's close, it looks good enough, good enough for me. Um, and then while we're talking about the engineer, even though this comes with the Deacon, here's the, um, let's see, let's hang this up a little bit. Here's, let me scoot over a little bit. Here's one more head sculpt for you right there. Ha 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 ha. Okay, whatever. It's like a barbershop quartet. If you include this guy. Um, but yeah, there's all the head sculpts right there of all the engineers. So that's all the engineer stuff. Alright, so we've already taken a look at David. Hi, David. Alright, so um, we'll just gotta look at the um, whoa. just gotta look at the aliens now. So let's get these guys out of the way. Alright, here comes all the aliens. Um, and amazingly, I actually got one of the little uh, snake alien things down there, whatever you want to call them. The little uh, space worm deals that are probably out of focus. Uh, I got that to actually stand up. How cool is that? He's just um, hanging out there out of focus. Um, so I can force this thing to focus, focus. Let's see what if I did this. Nope, that doesn't change it. Okay. But anywho, yep, there's all the aliens together. Um, so, let's see. Here's David, our friendly neighborhood human representative, even though he's not even human. He's um, roughly the same height as the um, deacon um, back there. Um, even though the deacon's on its well, it's on like high heels, and I'll show you that when I show you a stand. 
Um, and then, of course, you got this guy. And he would, you know, if you were to stand him up on the tentacles, this thing would be huge. You can see how far up they go. Um, so, yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, now there we go. So much for the size comparison there. And... There, keeps on following. All right, uh, let's see what we're gonna take a look at first. Let's look at all the little doodads first because this guy's surely gonna fall over. Let's see if we can get some focus going on. Yes, yeah, so we got the little space worm, space snake things. They come out flat, they have a wire in them, that's why they got the little holes in there. Um, let me move these guys out of the way, actually, showcase some of this stuff. What's that had just happened? All right, let's see here. Yeah, so you got the little snake wormy things. Pretty cool. Wish the detail had been a little bit better. I mean, look at some of the sculpts and stuff, and there's tons and tons of detail. Maybe you just need a little bit better wash on there. But you got one with the little flaps open, wings open. So it really has like a nice little face hugger look inside there. And then you got one that's closed. So it's all kind of flop closed there, almost like a little fist at the end. But really, a lot, a lot of detail, a lot of nice little lines in there. Just the wash is a little light. Maybe if the lines have been a little bit deeper in the sculpt. Um, and then, of course, here's the engineer head again. This is the one they operated on. It freaked out and everything. No, no way to plug him into the uh, engineer body, which would have been kind of cool to have a, uh, I don't know, desiccated head option for the uh, engineer. Let's see, hopefully this is on full focus here. Um, and then, of course, the head fits inside the upper portion of the helmet, which it looks like some kind of, use it as a ball or something, I don't know. Um, it just slips inside there. And then, since I've decapitated my other engineer, you can kind of see the differences there. The uh, eyes are kind of lumpy and are smooth and glossy on this one. And then it doesn't doesn't mesh all the way. You can still see the mouth, the elephant kind of looking thing there on that one, and then the underside. So that would have been cool if you could have like swapped them out and had like the desiccated head on the body, but yeah, whatever. And I went ahead and I, I broke my blinds off because these things snap onto the. Um, you can see those little white spots there on the backpack. I mean, because it's like I don't know if they're going to do a decapitated alien body. So if I wanted to display a body headless and I got that option now and if I want to I can super glue it back whatever no big deal all right look at the Deacon real quick now this is the only guy that came with a stand um, which is understandable um, it's a nice clear square or tri uh, rectangle rather um, and looks like he has a little clear I don't know stripper high heels on there uh, don't go ask your parents what a stripper is, kids. Just saying. Um, yeah. Kind of weird. Because um, his holes are in his little tiptoes there. His little tootsies. And he snaps on there really well. Not bad. Alright. So, anyway, looking at his articulation. He's got he's got tons of detail on there and everything. Reminiscent. Real reminiscent of the original Alien. He has like a ball joint up here. He has like a... If you can see like the pin right there. There's like a divot where the pin is it's like a hinge with a rotation on it which is kind of weird i would have expected a ball joint in there but i guess they wanted a certain amount of durability and a certain amount of um detail and accuracy so they kind of went with that and the same thing with the um the elbow it has like a hinge with a swivel on it so it's not a ball i mean you can't like you can't bend it or anything like that the only place you can bend it is up here at the top so you kind of get that movement but it doesn't actually bend at the elbow it swivels but it only has the hinge and a swivel, and you can't actually, like, if you hold the bicep, you can't actually bend the arm. He has, like, a ball joint in the waist. He has a ball joint, an actual ball joint, in the hip. He has a hinge swivel joint in the knee. And he has another ball joint down here for the feet. So, really cool. Um, yeah, so he's, like, painted Deacon Blue. I haven't, like, dug that deep into the production um, this guy, I don't know if that's what, why they named him that. It's because he went with this color, and um, it's actually a deacon blue, so they called him a deacon. Um, oh, another point of articulation is his mouth is kind of articulated. I don't know if it's supposed to be or not. You can kind of, kind of get it closed with a lot of fighting. That kind of wiggles around. So if you wanted to stick a hand in his mouth or something like that, you could, I guess. Um, 
but yeah, it's got a lot of the same details that your regular alien action figure does, and I kind of wish I brought one out now. But uh, it is missing a tail. doesn't have the back things, so I guess that's the next mutation. So there we go. It has like the same kind of feet. So really weird. I dig it. I think it's cool. Um, and as far as Prometheus news goes, as of April 15th, um, the guy, I forgot his name, starts with an L something, that um, did the, some of the script rewrites um, after Spate, um, he left. He's doing some other stuff. So we're not even sure what's going on with the, uh, the uh, sequel. All right. Uh, and I've got this guy posted on a... Um, or hanging out on a... Uh, my DC uh, flight stand. They're one of the extras I had laying around. So we'll go ahead and take this guy off. I was kind of surprised. Um, I think I've seen a video review of this guy because I wasn't sure if I was going to get this set. Because I'm like, yeah, it's got the battle damage engineer and all that. Um, but each of these limbs is actually sculpted differently. If you look really close, you can tell they're actually each each of the limbs. Are actually individually sculpted. I'll let you guys look at it. Oh, you can see. Someone let me break this up a little bit so, I can run here. so you can see each of the limbs are sculpted separately. Um, these things don't have wires in them. They're just there. They're just rubbery. No articulation um, in any of this stuff right here, other than this springy, rubbery stuff. You can swivel this. The little mouth thing. Uh, and it does have a wire in it, so it does, it does have like the unlimited articulation, I guess, in that aspect. That's it for the main body. You just have this separate part. And then uh, then you come to the legs, which they're all on these little ball joints. So you actually have a ball in there and a little socket. And they're all like that, and then they all bend. So I haven't actually tried to do like a... Um, a... Uh, a uh, battle scene with the... Um, with the alien, with the uh, engineer yet, you know, but it's never going to go good for the engineer, I can tell you that. Okay, so anyway, that's kind of weak, but whatever. I'm trying to get this done before my kid wakes up and starts screaming in the background. Because it's nap time, which is the best time at my house. Um, yeah, so there he is, kind of, kind of crouched down on his tentacles. And that was an unfortunate placement of his hand right then. So we'll put David right there in front of it. Just show you some of the scaling there. These tentacles are like all over the place. And you got David and the engineer. And then we'll stick the deacon in there because why not? And then we'll have the deacon holding some of the snake wormy things if he'll hold them. He can be like, hey, space worm for sale. And we'll put this one over here. And then we'll, oop, and then we'll throw the head in there. And then this guy drops by, and then we got uh, this guy trying to trying to trying to sneak into the picture. Um, and then this dude rides by. <laughs> ah, he's been on vacation. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, throw these guys in there for throw him in there. Officially acknowledge the presence of Hex. Just to give you an idea of what the size is on these guys compared to these Ewers Classics. Um, so there you go. That's my review of the all you know, Prometheus figures. Um, if you're a huge fan of, of the NECA stuff, they're worth picking up. Even if you just get like the plain old engineer or if you get the space jockey engineer suit. Especially if you're an alien fan, you're probably going to grab this anyway. And then only if you're a real big fan of the movie are you going to grab the other stuff. Um, they're all great. Um, as far as toys, like for kids, eh, I mean, the movie is fairly inappropriate, I want to say. Um, for the younger kids that would be in that play group of like, what, 3 to three to 10, 3 to 11, because like my daughter is 11 and she doesn't really play with stuff anymore, dolls and that kind of, I mean, just a little bit, but, you know, she's kind of outside that heavy play group, so I don't think these really, really fit in there very well. I mean, I let them play with some stuff, but... Um, not that the durability is not there, just I don't want to mess up the paint apps and stuff. I probably wouldn't play with the with the engineers here, just because they don't have anything that they can break. Um, except for maybe, oh, oh, he's upset. Except for maybe the uh, ball joints in the hands. 
Um, so the hands are swappable. And I did do this earlier. If you look at some of the still pictures that I, I'm going to post, you know, you got like that and this. And then if you wanted to take one of his dramatic hands, you just take his hand off. This one's like, just joke it. Yeah, kind of hand. And they're actually a little bit tighter on the battle damage guy. And then so you can totally do Shakespeare with your engineer if you'd hold it. Mm. Ta -da. <laughs> uh, yeah, fellow of infinite jest and all that. So, yeah, you can swap out the hands. So that's what I meant to do earlier. So the paint matches up, and if you notice on the battle damage engineer, his arms are actually wider. So if it's intentionally done, so you could swap it out or what, but you can. There you go. Um, for the whole group, I'm going to give these guys a 9 out of 10. Um, only because um, I would have liked to seen a few more accessories with like um, like the big guys. I would have liked to have seen something like, uh, I don't know, like, like the flute thing that David played. Or include like some different worms or include an alternate head or something like that. I don't know. I would have liked to see that for the big guys, but because they're huge, I don't really worry about it so much. Um, the Deacon was really cool because you got the alien, and then because he was a smaller figure, probably took less plastic to produce. He's not super detailed like the, the human characters with all the little tampos and stuff, so they gave him like the um, the desiccated head, as I want to call it, and helmet, and the snakes, which is really cool. I'm glad we got these. I just wish this one could have actually snapped onto this body. Um, and all that. And you can hear my son in the background if you listen really, really closely. So we're going to wrap this up so I can go get him. Um, but yeah. 9 out of 10. Um, I, I do love all the accessories and everything that came with. I just I, I just like to see more. Eh, that's just me. Um, you know, that and, and like that's half a point. Another half a point is like, you know, you got like little pins that you can see there and David's hips. Um, you know. Uh, the engineers themselves. The actual toys themselves. Um, my opinion on, on the accessories aside, the figures are great. I think they're tens, but uh, for the for the product, for what you pay for it, you know, seventeen, eighteen dollars, whatever. I'd like seeing an accessory with each each figure anyway. Um, so yeah, not bad. Um, if you like the movie and you collect toys, why haven't you picked these up yet? So if you don't have some, get some. If nothing else, get you a space jockey. And you know that all the girls love your um, Michael Fassbender there, so you need to grab him so you can be like, hey girls, you want to come over by and see my Fassbender? So, you know, you can, oh, and here goes the sun in the background. So, with that, this review is over. Don't even think about it, blue boy.